What's up guys? When it comes to optimizing your body composition and your health, it's often from adopting habits that allow you to reduce stress and confusion around what you eat. Now many people have poor eating habits, lack the expertise or awareness around making these simple changes. So I'm gonna share with you three game-changing nutrition habits that can make a huge difference in your body composition, how you feel, your overall energy, how your body burns fat and builds muscle. So number one, intermittent fasting. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it often gets confused with time-restricted eating and that's what we're gonna be talking about. But essentially, we're shortening the window of what we eat. And it could be we're only gonna eat from the hours of you know, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. But we do it every day from the last meal that we eat at dinner time when we're sleeping until we break our fast in the morning. Now a ton of research is being you know focused on these areas it's been done for years but a really cool one that gets my attention is they took a huge group of active individuals that were doing resistance training and had them eat from the hours of 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. and over a six week period they lost on average about a pound per fat and they actually gained a little bit of muscle. So pretty crazy to think that they're still eating a high amount of calories around the 2800 mark. They were just eating with the restricted window. And so that can be for many reasons. Maybe it you know, improves blood sugar and insulin sensitivity or removes and restricts the chances of them eating more processed foods. But it's an easy way to simplify and make it simple, you can start with something as easy as 12 hours. So just going 12 hours from your last meal into your first meal. So that's the easiest way to get started with it. And don't worry, you're not gonna lose muscle. It actually can be a good thing to give yourself a break. And this is an easy game-changing habit. And you can level it up by doing longer, you know? So go two to four hours longer. You know, a lot of people prefer a 16-8 where they're fasting for 16 hours and eating for eight hours. And if you just agree to eating maybe three meals, it really simplifies things. And you say, I don't eat outside of those time windows. You might be more productive. A lot of people love it. There's a lot of research online to be able to look up more and see if it's a good fit for yourself. Number two is carb cycling. Now this helps you because you have awareness of the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating. And some people, depending on lifestyle factors and genetics, are extremely sensitive to carbohydrates and how they affect their blood sugar. So what is carb cycling? Simply, you are eating carbohydrates on days where you are active or have higher volume with your training. And then on rest days, you'd be eating a little bit less or eliminating those starchy or simple carbohydrates, the things that have sugars in them. So you'd be focusing more around complex carbohydrates, vegetables, fruit, and so on. So this works for a lot of people because you're able to have a lower blood sugar response throughout the day and your body is gonna look for other forms of energy. Ideally, you're gonna burn through the glucose and glycogen that you have and your body will be able to break down fat a little bit better. Plus, your fat burning switch is more likely to be turned on because you don't have a constant release of blood sugar and insulin that it takes a lot of energy. So getting started, like I said, you can simply just focus on keep the carbohydrates on days that you're working out, especially uh, more challenging workout and then days where you're not working out, stick to more vegetables, fruits, and proteins and avoid fruit juices and so on. The next level is creating more of a routine to where maybe you go five days of a lower carbohydrate and just have your carbohydrates around your exercise maybe after that and then the rest of the day is fairly lower carbohydrate. So you can go five days low, one to two days higher, and you could extend that for you know a week at a time or two weeks and find what works best for you. Kind of similar principles to what you're doing with the ketogenic diet is you're teaching your body to burn fat better. In this case, you're trying to become more flexible from a metabolical stamp, metabolic standpoint. Number three is monitoring your blood sugar. Uh, many people think that this is a lot more challenging, more of a hassle than it really is. People that are diabetic are doing this on a daily basis. Some people are doing it just to have data and know how the foods affect them. When we have 
elevated blood sugar, it can lead to oxidative stress, it can increase our body's cholesterol, our LDL cholesterol, which also you know, can be related to excess inflammation within our body that essentially promotes more degenerative disease and makes you age faster. So you can get started by picking up a glucometer or a glucose meter from a local drugstore or ordering. Monitor the foods that you're eating and make sure that they're not having a significant effect on your blood sugar and spiking your blood sugar. Some people are gonna be more sensitive to this based on hereditary and lifestyle factors. But understand that when you test, you have data, uh, rule of thumb, if the blood sugar is very high, that is elevating your blood sugar effect and it's excess energy that your body can't use at that time and that essentially causes a stress and chronically over time can cause a lot more long-term issues. If when you test it and you test fasted and after you eat for several days, now if you test and it's low, same thing, you may be hungry or your body could use some energy from some starchy vegetables or different fruits. But ultimately, if you wanna simplify this, focus on foods that help regulate your blood sugar. It's gonna be hard to be in a fat burning mode or being able to convert fat into energy if your blood sugar is constantly spiked. When you're eating a whole foods diet with fiber, things like legumes and vegetables and fruits, you tend to have more of a steady blood sugar release. So, I hope that that was helpful. These are three tools that you can get started very easy, at least to create more awareness and reduce that stress. I hope it all was helpful. Keep living a peak performance life.